Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. New this noon, thieves break into a Dave & Buster's in Utica, smashing into two different ATMs. But what was it that they took from a different machine that has detectives really upset? But first, unsolved questions after a woman and vehicle remain unaccounted for this afternoon after a shooting near a Detroit motel leaves a man critically injured. How you can help. But first, we want to get to our breaking news this noon as stocks open sharply lower on Wall Street following losses in Europe. And you are looking live at the big board right now. Thank you so much for joining us this noon. It is a worrisome day on Wall Street as a major economic indicator happened earlier this morning. It's called an inverted yield curve, which many economists say is recession indicator. It's complicated, and that's why we are lucky to have local for business editor and certified financial planner, I might add, Rob Maloney here in the studio with us to give us an explanation of what happened and what it all means for our financial outlook, Rod. Well, Ron, let's start by saying this recessionary signal lasted for a very brief time this morning. And it all has to do with bond interest rates. So when you buy a bond, say a government bond, that you're lending the government money, expecting more money back when the bond matures. But when you buy bonds, you expect to get more money back for a 10-year bond, right, with this, than a two-year bond. The 10-year bond is because the government has your money longer. They should pay you more, right? Well... In this instance, the two-year bond had the higher yield than the 10-year bond, and so that was inverted. So let's take a look now at this chart we took from CNBC, and this is right here, the inverted yield curve, happened about 6 o'clock this morning, and we're talking about very minute amounts um, that is different. So you've got the two-year here in purple, the 10-year here in gold. Now, again, we're talking about very minute amounts of difference here, but it didn't last long, and the 10-year is back above the two-year this noontime. So why are we so interested in this? Well, it becomes clear when you look at the Federal Reserve Board chart of the last few times this happened. And you'll notice an inverted yield curve happened back in 2007, just before uh, the downturn in 2009, which devastated us here again in Michigan. Again, it happened in 2000, 1990, back in then again in 1980. Some very difficult recessionary times for us here. And so what this says is that it looks like we could be looking at a recession somewhere in the next couple of years, but nobody knows exactly when that will be. And so a lot of people wonder, well, why did this all happen? this inverted yield curve. Well, what we're hearing is, is that the global economy is slowing down. China's economy is slowing down, particularly, in fact, their manufacturing output is the lowest it's been in 15 years. We've got European recession issues as well. And so it's hard for the United States to say the one lone place that has a good economy when the rest of the world is in trouble. And so that's why you're seeing the stock market down by 600 points. Rhonda, back to you. All right, Rod. Well, let's hope we can turn things around. We certainly don't want to be in a recession. Appreciate you being here with us this noon. Meanwhile, developing right now, a woman is unaccounted for after a shooting near a Detroit motel leaves a man critically injured. A 23-year-old man is in critical condition after the shooting near the Cabana Motel on Harper Avenue on Detroit's east side. Police say that the man was shot while driving a gold Buick LeSabre. Right now, officers say that that vehicle and a woman inside of the car are both unaccounted for. So police are looking for that vehicle. It's a 2003 Buick LeSabre with a license plate number you see on your screen, CVB425. If you know where this vehicle is, think that you've seen it anywhere around town, you should contact Detroit police right away. Also developing this noon, an investigation is underway after a body is discovered inside of a burned out car. Firefighters responded to a call about a fire in the parking lot of a Meyer store. And this is in Waterford Township along Pontiac Road. And after they put out the flames, that is when they found a body in the back seat of the vehicle. Right now, police are not releasing any other information, but we are continuing to monitor the investigation and we'll keep you updated here and on clickondetroit.com with any new information we learn. The other big story that we are following for you this noon is the search for the person responsible for breaking into a Dave & Buster's in Utica. Not only did the person break into two ATMs, but as Nick Monticelli shows us, he also stole donation money from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Good afternoon. I want to give you the lay of the land here. The thief smashed in through that window, getting into the building pretty easily, and then making his way over to these machines. The ATM, where he got a whole lot of cash, but 
Really the most disturbing one is this donation box on a Pac-Man machine for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He took a sledgehammer, busted through the side of this glass, and then just shoveled all of the money out. In fact, all of it is captured on the security cameras here inside of the building. You can see this lone thief, again, coming in here, taking a sledgehammer and busting through that box, taking out that money. Once he did that pretty easily, honestly, then he moved to the ATM and worked over and over and over again, trying to get that open. In fact, if you look carefully, you can see him really start to get tired after a while. Once he finally gets into that ATM machine, then he moves to a second machine in the game room in the back section of this Dave and Buster's and gets that one open as well. The detectives from the Utica Police Department are still working to determine exactly how much money was stolen. But again, there's that different factor here. Yes, there was ATM money, but also money for make a wish money for children that had the detectives really disturbed. That's for children that are sick that that have a poor quality of life because they're so sick and they're just trying to, you know, give these kids an opportunity to enjoy some time and have something fun. He took money from that. I find that appalling. So the detectives are obviously working on this as fast as they can, but if you know anything, maybe recognize that man or somebody was bragging about this, you're asked to call the Utica Police Department or you can call Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. In Utica, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick, thank you. And hopefully they are able to track down whomever did that. Let's get to the weather. It is a beauty outside, picture perfect. And honestly, Paul, every time I see our sky cam on a day like today, I, it doesn't even look real. It's so beautiful. I know. Today's your golf league too, right? It is. Oh, yeah. Perfect weather. It's good. It's looking good. City Airport right now, 79 degrees. That's the city of Detroit, of course. Dearborn at 74. Taylor at 80. Metro Airport at 80 degrees. Look at you, Sterling Heights. You're at 79. West Bloomfield at 81. That's our metro zone as we continue with four zone weather. Uh, upper 70s in Monroe. Road, Dundee, you're in the mid 70s. Blissfield at 75. Manchester at 75. Into our west zone, 82 in Ipsy, 79 in Brighton. Oh man, I tell you, it's beautiful out there. And get to our north zone. Things are just as nice. Look at that 77 port here on KPAC, Melvin, 76 in Emmett, 72 in Sandusky. Now we have wind coming off of Lake Huron, so that might be tempering things a little bit up in the thumb. But you can see on the satellite, we have a lot of open sky, but we also have some cloudiness moving in. So it's a mix of sun and clouds today. There's technically just the smallest chance for a shower, but I think most of us, if not all of us, have a dry day. Low to mid 80s for the high. Doesn't get a whole lot better than this, but we're going to have to talk about the weekend forecast because, of course, the Dream Cruises this weekend will do that in just a little bit. Rhonda? Oh, yes. The all-important forecast for Dream Cruise. Thank you, Paul. Later this afternoon, a longtime friend of the Dayton mass shooter is going to be facing a judge for allegedly helping the gunman buy body armor and for allegedly helping him assemble the assault rifle used in that mass shooting. Ethan Colley is his name. He's facing federal charges for allegedly lying on forms to purchase the body armor as well as his own firearm. Meanwhile, police are reviewing new surveillance video, painting a haunting timeline of how quickly the killer shot 26 people in just 32 seconds. This was the next big, I think, chunk of the investigation that we felt comfortable of releasing because we, we have high level of confidence it's accurate in terms of time frame and location and activity. Mm. Police say that the shooter had an obsession with violence and had expressed a desire to commit a mass shooting. Today, Oakland County has another chance to say goodbye to County Executive Elbricks Patterson. Patterson passed away earlier this month after his battle with pancreatic cancer. A visitation is being held at the Woodside Bible Church on Rochester Road in Troy from 3 until 8 today. And a funeral is scheduled there for tomorrow at 1.30. And all of these are open to the public, both the visitation and the funeral. Anna Patterson will be buried in a private ceremony. The county now has the tough task of selecting the person that will succeed L. Brooks Patterson. And today, the Oakland County Board of Commissioners are reviewing, interviewing five candidates looking to become county executive. So far, three candidates have completed their interviews. Two more are expected this afternoon. The Board of Commissioners could make their appointment at their next meeting, which is just in a couple of days on Friday. 
ASAP, ASAP Rocky was just found guilty of assault for a brawl in a Swedish court. Now, new at noon, we'll tell you if the rapper is now facing prison time there. But first, what were guards doing during Jeffrey Epstein's apparent suicide? Coming up next, what a federal investigation team believes may have happened before the billionaire's death.